Welcome to another video from DIY Daily. Just put together a quick video, just running through the fix for a fault on this 2011 Mercedes C-Class. Now this year that we've got the little engine warning lights on, just see the little engine light down there. Now you can clear the fault code out, it, sometimes it stays out for a day or two and then it comes back on. But I'll just run you through the fault code now, um, what, what I found it to be, a couple of checks that you can do, and just how to replace the faulty item as well. We've done a full code scan with a top-down diagnostic machine. And if we just look in the engine ECU, you can just see we've got a fault code there, which is 15FF, the signal voltage of component B28-8, DPF pressure sensor signal, too low. Now, the faults normally relate, and I've got a wiring diagram. I'll just run you through some of the checks and the voltages that you should have. Um, but it's quite a common issue with these. The faults relate into the DPF pressure sensor, the sensor that reads the pressure on the DPF. Now, this is a genuine Mercedes one. If you check the links in the description below, I'll put a link to where you can get them from. Now, do always fit genuine Mercedes ones on these Merc C-classes. Just I've had quite a few problems with some of the aftermarket ones, even the Boss even the Bosch ones they just don't seem to marry up right um, but with these um, Mercedes ones I'm pretty sure I can't quite remember because I've been fitting the genuine ones for a while now but I think when you get the Bosch ones it normally comes with a different number on it it's like 278 instead of 279 but I'll put a link to one in the description below where you can um, get it from as well Well, I'm just going to get under the bonnet now, show you where the sensor is, just show you the wiring diagram and a couple of tests that you can do. And then we'll just run you through once it's fitted, um, just running through on the diagnostic machine. If there's any options on there to sort of program it or tell it it's had one, clearing the codes, we'll give it a run and then just let you know that it's fixed the fault. Right, so just coming under the bonnet, you can see this one's the V6 model, um, but this fault code does apply to the 2 litre diesels as well. First thing we we'll do is just pop this engine cover off, really simple to get off, just got to pop the little trim up on the front there. It's actually got one side broken on there, but this side's just a little clip on there. So just pop that off, and then you can just pop the cover off, get that out of the way, and then we'll show you where the sensor is. Right, so you can see you've just got the cover off now. Now these DPF pressure sensors can throw up a few different fault codes. Now this one's coming up with an electrical issue with it, um, which is what they're quite common for. But there are, if you've got different fault codes with the pressure sensor, depends what the fault code is um, to what the actual fault might be. It could easily be something to do with the actual DPF filter or the pipes. Basically this, you can see there's two outlets on it, two pipes go on there. And basically on the, on the DPF section of the exhaust, one pipe goes to the back of the DPF and one goes to the front of the DPF and it basically reads the difference in pressure through the DPF. So if you've got some different fault codes in there, it could actually relate to the um, DPF filter being blocked or if it's getting an incorrect reading, it could be the pipe between this sensor and the filter, um, like a split in the pipe or anything like that. So, But yeah, we've got an electrical issue with this one that we're looking into tonight. And basically the sensor is just located just down here. That's really straightforward to get off. You can just see, we've just got a little sort of pinch, pinch style connector on there. You've got to push that tab in on there and just flick it up to get the connector off. Got one 10 mil bolt on there. So we're just going to undo that just so we can get the sensor aside. And then there's two little clips just holding the actual rubber pipes onto the sensor. So we're just going to get that swapped over now. Now you can just see on there, the old part number is actually completely different to the new part number that we've got. So there's obviously been a supersession of the part number as well. Right, so we've just got the sensor disconnected now, just on that, undone that 10 mil. Now, just before running you through the wiring diagram, I was just sort of jumping into replacing it there. It's just that I've already tested it, so I was sort of forgetting about actually showing you the wiring uh, checks, that's all. But if we just show you the plug, you can just see on the side of it, I think it is. Yeah, we've got some pin numbers there. So you can see we've got one on the right and three on the uh, left there. So we're just going to run through the wiring diagram for it now and just show you what to check on there. Now, I'll just put a still shot of the wiring diagram on the video as well. But basically, you can see on the diagram, this is the DPF pressure sensor there. And what we're looking for, pin three there. Basically, we're going to be testing these with the ignition on stage two. We can see pin three should have a five volt feed. Uh, pin one is the earth, so we're looking for an earth on that. And then pin two is the that wire communicates with pin B31 on the engine ECU. 
Now the engine ECU on these is actually quite tucked away. It has, because it has been clearing, it must be getting a signal wire. So all I'm gonna concentrate on doing tonight, rather than digging into the ECU, and I know these are really common for this code, I'm just gonna just check that there's simply a five volt feed on pin three, and there's a nerf on pin one. So I'll just show you how to do that quickly now. Basically, we've got the multimeter out. We're just gonna put it on the voltage setting, and we're just gonna put the, we haven't got a negative uh, battery terminal under the bonnet here, so we're just gonna hold the black wire to an earth point under the bonnet. Uh, one of these engine brackets will be plenty enough there. And then we're gonna use the red wire just to probe into pin uh, three while we're checking for the five volt feed. So I'll just put the ignition on to start with, just while we do that. So just show you at the minute, we've got the ignition on, we've got the red wire of the multimeter in pin three there. I'm just gonna touch just an earth with the bank wire there. And if we just hold that on, you can see we've got the five volt feed there to pin three. So next thing we're gonna do is check the earth connection. So what we're gonna do to check the earth, we're just gonna now change the multimeter to the resistance. Just put it on to continuity there. And then doesn't matter which way around you do with the wires, but this time we're checking for pin one. So we'll just put that in pin one there. Now I just had to squick, um, just skip the video quick, just so I was having a bit of a workout. It's just, um, it's the first time I've come across an issue with this, but the wiring diagram that I've got actually got tonight for this one, wasn't actually marrying up to the um, connector correctly. So I'm not quite sure exactly what's going off there. Um, but basically the, the colours on the pins don't actually match up on this one. Um, it is right with pin 3 being the 5 volt feed. Um, but the earth on this one is actually on pin 2 which is the middle one. And then pin 3 is the signal wire to the ECU. So all I've done at the minute, I've just got, I'm on the resistance setting still on the multimeter. But if I just check and just put the black wire to an earth there, you can just see we've got a resistance there of about five ohms there, which is okay on that. So we know it's got a good earth, we've got its five volt feed. And so I haven't actually checked the, the only way to check the resistance on that wire there. I'm not gonna advise to go off this wiring diagram because I'm not 100% sure if this is gonna be right, but basically that signal wire is gonna go directly to the ECU. So you need to get the correct pin on the ECU just to check which one that goes to and from and just make sure it's got continuity there. But as I said, this is a really common issue if it loads these sensors for this reason. So, But now that I've checked that and we've got the 5 volt on the earth, just going to get this sensor swapped over now, get them two connectors off there, uh, two clamps off there, get it swapped over. We'll have a look at the differential pressure reading once we've got the diagnostic machine back on it, see what it's doing and give it a good one. So we've got that off. Now it was a little bit tight to get that off. Um, one of the pipes has actually broke off. Uh, I'll say this one's been on for a long time. The pipe's actually um, broken off inside the rubber hose. I'll be able to get that out. We'll have a go at that in a minute. Um, but just to get these little clips off, I've got, uh, you can just see they've got these little spring clips. I've got a pair of these Facon pliers. I'll put a link in the description below to these because these are mega handy. You normally get this style of um, these pliers where they just pinch on the end here and basically what they have you can just see they have one sort of thicker end there and then a thinner side there and basically one way pulls it together and clips it over the top and then the other way um the thicker side pushes in and pops that clip off um, but normally when they're just on the end there it makes them a little bit you can obviously only get onto the clip straight onto it whereas these have one on the back and one on the side there so you can get down the side of something and pinch it up and pop it off which makes it loads easier when you can't sort of get on it directly in that position there you can just simply sneak down the side and just get on it which is the really handy piece of kit them so i'll put a link in the description below to where you can get a set of them from we'll just have a go now at just getting the uh, broken bit of pipe out quickly
Uh, so we've got that out, it's a little bit fiddly, it's had to use a bit of a wood screw, never know when a wood screw might come in handy in a workshop. Uh, and just a bit of a pick, or well, a couple of picks, but just a, a long pick, and I was just sort of breaking it. I didn't really grab it, I was hoping to grab it and pull it out with a screw, but I started to sort of break it up with a screw, and then just pickle it out. But the pipe's nice and clear now. So all I'm going to do is get the new sensor into place, put the clips back on, connect it back up, and then we'll get back in the vehicle, uh, run through, some, clear the fault code, just have a look at the DPF pressure readings, give it a good road test, and make sure it's fixed the fault. Right, so that's all fitted now. Let's just get back on the diagnostic machine. We'll clear the fault out and have a quick look at the DPF pressure readings as well. Right, so just see we've cleared the fault codes there. The next thing I'm going to do is just check and just see if there's a procedure just to see. It might actually be up here on it on the special functions. Right, so you can just see it one in the on the special functions on the this top down machine it gives a lot of common issues on the main screen but we've now gone directly into the actual engine ecu and again in the engine ecu i'll just show you going back to it from the start but we've got special functions there and if we go into teaching processes you'll see we've got a teaching process for the um differential pressure sensor b28 slash 8 which obviously was the we know it's that sensor because that was the fault code we had relating to that sensor as well so you can just see there's a little bit of a procedure to it i'm just going to run through this quickly now you can see that successfully done the procedure for calibrating the new sensor Uh, so now that we've calibrated it, we'll just check on the data quickly of the um, pressure sensor, just see what it's reading, make sure it's reading okay. And just say we've got pressure difference in the DPF filter there. So if we just strike it up now. You can now see that the sensor's reading. If we just rev it up. We clearly see that the sensor's quite responsive now. It's actively responding to us revving it up. So what we're gonna do now is give it a decent road test. Uh, and then I'll just do a quick scan and just let you know that it's definitely fixed the fault. Right, so we've just got back from a decent road test. We've actually done about 12 mile in it. Uh, drove absolutely spot on, no issues at all. Just strike it up, just show you've got no engine light on now. 
see the light on the right there just goes out um, we've done a full code scan on it again with the top down diagnostic machine and just show you quickly nice and clear in there obviously there is some other issues in some of the other ECUs but in the engine control module nice and clear in there so it's definitely fixed the fault just thought i'd put that video together there if anyone's got that issue with that sensor um check the link in the description below if you want one and i definitely recommend fitting a genuine mercedes one rather than trying to fit aftermarket one so just had it had it um had it lead us down the wrong direction in the past where we fitted one um a bosch one and we couldn't actually get rid of the fault but genuine mercedes one all fitted calibrated properly and sorts the problem out so but yeah, hope you liked the video. If you did, give it a quick thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.